Sean, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Pete. Thanks for having me. The next thing, and a lot of people ask questions about this, and this is something that Dave Rice and I commonly talk about, but I really wanted to be able to show more specifically when and how you would do a calibration. So let's talk about calibration first and talk about when you would do a calibration. So color calibration is one of those things I think a lot of people think when they install the machine, it's doing it all automatically. Um, it is not, it is a, something you have to go to the control panel and, and initiate. Um, you know, obviously brand new out of the box, I would do a color calibration. And you know, there's some people that will do it monthly. There's some that will do it quarterly. Some will do it when the weather changes, right? We go into, you know, we're in beautiful Sarasota, Florida with the high humidity. And once winter comes and that goes down a little bit, we might want, you know, throughout the seasons because of that humidity, just to, you know, adjust the printer for that. That's kind of the main factors, you know, kind of, you know, weather, um, and those kind of things along with some people just like to do it on a regular schedule um, and have it set up like that. Now one of the things you told me years and years ago when we worked together early on you said listen if you have media delivered to you in the summer don't calibrate and don't print to that paper immediately out of the box especially if it's in the back of a delivery truck can you kind of explain how long they need to wait and why they need to wait? Sure it's just the media needs to kind of catch up to you know the environment it's going to be in because obviously if it's coming out of you know a back of a truck sitting dry heat um, it just needs to acclimate to the you know and I always tell people once you take that roll back out of the machine if you're changing rolls put it back in the you know plastic wrap and put it in a box and make sure that it's kind of in its you know back in its environment that it needs to be. Yeah I guess the reality is if you print to paper that's 100 degrees out of the back of the truck that just delivered it one day and then the next day you print to it and it's acclimated to 73 degrees in your home, it's mm -hmm. probably gonna look very, very different, correct. correct? Yeah, and so, a lot of it's a humidity factor and you know, and people think it's the printer. The printer has a very, very broad range of humidity as far as the specifications, whereas you start looking at media and depending on the media, the ranges are very small. So, you know, and every media has got a spec sheet that tells you, you know, kind of what levels to put it in, but that's, you know, well, impact your color and everything, how that paper acts through the printer. Gotcha, so let's go to the control panel and talk us through exactly how you go through and do a calibration. Sure. So in here it's, you know, we go to the maintenance tab. From there we go to color calibration, auto adjust, um, and, let, and the printer will do a quick cleaning and it will kind of, you know, go ahead and, and print out a sheet. So this is a calibration sheet that prints out of the, this would be from the Pro 4600. And it just prints out one, you know, every single color that's in the printer and reads it back in. So it's, it's basically a, a densitometer that's built in the machine that's just taking its, you know, values off of there and, and getting it to the best possible, you know, spot this printer. So this is a 12 ink machine and we've got 12 lines representing each color. And yep. then the chrome optimizer is represented by one of the grays, is that correct? Yes. So each color is represented and then the different tonal, uh, the different tonal ranges and patches you see there the printer knows what those colors are supposed to look like yep. based on the media that you put in. Correct. And if it's not seeing that, you don't need to do any adjustments nope. afterwards. It's doing it it's on the doing fly. It. Yep, it's doing it on itself. So if you're seeing a color shift in a print that you've done in the past, time to calibrate? Time to calibrate. Perfect. And, and then up top, I mean, is this where I look to find out when the last time I calibrate or is that something I see on the panel? How can I tell the last time I calibrate? You can actually do both. I mean, I would say a majority of people are not hanging on to the calibration sheet. It's just going straight in the garbage. But this does have the date um, that it was done. Otherwise, and the media type, um, I can go on the control panel in that same place that I do my calibration and it will tell me when I last calibrated on what media directly on the screen. Directly on the screen. Perfect. And you were saying at least quarterly we should calibrate at the very Oops. least? Yeah, that was, you know, everyone's got their own different ways of doing it. It really depends on how color critical of uh, operation you have. Yeah, I think I used to tell people beginning of the seasons, when you hear first day of spring, yeah. calibrate. First day of summer, calibrate. Because those are the times where you also see the significant changes in weather, humidity, and mm -hmm. things like that that would affect calibration. So yeah. that was always a trigger for me. Uh, and our good friend and co-worker, uh, Dave Rice, he calibrates probably more than anybody ever needs to. I think he calibrates weekly on probably. his machines just yeah. to keep them going. Yeah. Uh, but he looks at calibration also as a way to make sure that you're keeping your print head primed because 
I think one of the things that you always say is don't let your printer just sit idle and not getting used. So he uses his calibration target as a way of not using a lot of paper, yep. but to keep ink going through your print head so that you know for a fact every nozzle is being used and you're pushing a little bit of ink through. And as you can see from this, it didn't use a lot of ink at all. So using minimal paper, minimal yeah, very ink. very little paper, very little ink. Um, and it's a great way for depending on what you're doing from a benchmark standpoint, like Dave Rice uses his his printers for is doing a lot of benchmarks. So he knows that before he starts doing those tests, his printer is at its optimal performance. Gotcha. And especially with customers that have multiple machines. So if we had a, you know, a 46 and a 26 and a 6600 all next to each other, we calibrate on the same media, they're going to be exactly the same. There's going to be no difference between any of those three printers. So that is another, another scenario where somebody would want to pay attention to calibration when they have multiple printers. If you guys ever have any questions and you need more information than what we talked about today, feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-4-LEXJET or LEXJET.com. We're happy to help you in any way you may need.